Bab Shalom Yeshua. As always, we continue in the word of the Most High, giving all praise and glory to the Most High power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, forever and ever and ever. Bab Shalom Yashak Yabashai. So, in the name of the Lord and Savior. So, always, we're going to start with Colossians 3 and 17. And I want to continue on these plagues and curses the curses and plagues that we see in this Bible and it's among us today and among the nations this message is to the 12 tribes of Israel and anyone else that wants to listen and learn they'll be able to listen and learn but this message is to the children of Israel the 12 tribes of Israel Colossians 3, 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all. Bahasham Mashiach Yavashai. Give me thanks to the Most High and the Father. Bahasham Mashiach Yavashai. It's very important that, you know, I see that I, I exalt, highly exalt those that really see this and always start with this because this is how we reach the Most High. And what we're doing when we ask the Most High to send his holy angels to be around us in our prayer. We say this all the time. So this is how we reach the most high. He said, no man comes to the Father but by him. That's a Mashiach Yahweh Shai, the world called Jesus Christ. That's not his name. The J was invented in 1630 AD. You know, so, and we give thanks to the most high by him. I mean, it's not something that, you know, I made up. It's something that the Spirit gave me for our people to really see. Because go to Ephesians 5 and 20. Because it said in Colossians 3, 17, give me thanks to the Most High and the Father by Him. So how do you do that? He told us this in Ephesians 5 and 20. Give me thanks always for all things unto the Most High and the Father, just like we see it in Colossians 3, 17. How? In the name of our power, our master, Mashiach Yahushai. So that's Bahashama Mashiach Yahushai. So it's nothing that I'm saying that's wrong. It's something that you should pick up on. You want this spiritual power that's promised to us. You waiting? You ain't gotta wait for anything. This this goes this goes to the Most High. What power are you gonna get more so than from the Most High? Mashiach Yahushai said. St. John 14 and 6. And I must review this at times because I see people not picking it up. St. John 14 and 6. The Mashiach Oshai said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, at least myself, I want to go to the most high. And he said, nobody comes to the Father but by him. He said, either way, it shows how to follow the truth, which is the law. That's going to lead to everlasting life, people. So when you jump down to verse 13, it says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that's about Shema Mashiach El Bashar, all day long, in the name of the Lord and Savior, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You know, that the Most High can be glorified in the Mashiach El Bashar. You thought about him? No. Nope. Nobody, when I read these scriptures, ever thought about him. I'm just giving it to you, straight up. Nobody ever went back to him. This says, I read, I read it to him like this. And whatsoever ye shall do, ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you act, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. So I said, what, what do you get out of that? Everybody say, well, if I ask anything in his name, I'm going to get it. Nobody thought about that the Father could be glorified in the Son. That's something for him. Went right over their head. I'm talking about everybody. Everyone. You see, so that's why we always look at, we always have to look at these scriptures as what's important to the Most High, first and foremost. What's important to a Mashiach Yavashai? That benefits him for us doing this. 
The most I can be glorified this son. Mashiach Yahweh Shah. So let's continue with these plagues. Because like I say, these plagues are infirmities that people have. And they be plagued. Like most I say, gonna bring plagues on these earth. They here. For real, for real. Go to the book of Mark. Mashiach Yahweh Shah was on the earth. Mark the third chapter. And look at verse 10. It says, For he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him as many as had plagues. See? They was pressing against him to touch him as many as had plagues. They tried to be healed. But they was they had plagues. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of the Most High. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. It wasn't his time. See, he didn't make himself with no reputation, in other words. Don't let me be known. But people was rushing on him, man. They wanted to touch him. It's like the woman had the blood issue for 12 years. That was a plague. 12 years? Suffering? That's a plague. Go to Luke, the southern chapter. Look at uh, Luke 7 and 21. And in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues see. and of evil spirits and unto many that were blind he gave sight so he made the blind see again many that were blind he made to see but you see people were full of infirmities and plagues I got all these diseases that they have on the earth today plagues he was healing them and they could be healed today Then the Master Yosha answered and said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. To the poor the gospel is preached, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. See? That's why he said, that you have to confess him. If you want the most high to hear your prayer. Because if you don't confess him, then how you gonna how's he going to the most high on your behalf? Look at St. John 10 and 32. He said, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men. You don't confess him before men, man? I'm going to check your shine. It's going to be coming out of your mouth. If not out of your mouth, you're going to be writing about him? Y'all got We got texting. We got Instagram. We got YouTube. We got Facebook. We got some kind of way you're going to be confessing him before men. Remember he said, no man comes to the Father but by me. So you just want him to go to the Father whenever you want something for yourself. That's what he said. Whoso therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. So how is it that he will confess you before the Most High and you don't confess him before men? So he's just your errand boy, right? 
He just your errand messenger. You go there and tell him this and uh, bring it on back to me, huh? He said, but whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my father, which is in heaven. He said, think not that I come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. That's real, people. So, a sword is a weapon of war. But see, they don't teach anything about them of that nature. But that's his nature. Both sides of man of war say, I might follow our one. What do you think? He come to judge and make war? He come with rose petals and tulips and, and dandelions and so forth? No, he coming to make war. Coming to burn people up. But he's not coming as a man. He's coming in his angelic power. That's why, you know, people that, are, that have all these plagues better recognize before it's too late because they could be healed, but he's telling you, you got to confess him. You're going to the most on your behalf. You could be cured. You could be healed. But it's on him. You know, it's, it's, it's in the power of the Most High. If you confess him, he will confess you before the Most High. And not only that, the angels going to confess you also. But if you don't, then you can't expect the angels to be looking after you because you're not doing what it says to do. Go to Luke 12 and 8. Also I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of the Most High. So if the Son of Man who is a Mashiach Yahweh Shai confess you before the angels of the Most High, then the angels will be looking out for you. We call on Michael, Uriel, Gabriel, and Raphael to surround us and protect us. But if you ain't confessing to Mashiach Kel Shai before men, then how are these angels going to be protecting you? Or Raphael going to heal you from the plagues that you're dealing with? You think it, you speak it, you act upon it. But, if, but he that denied me before men shall be denied before the angels of the Most High. And that's serious because if you're not with them, then you're against them. If you don't know this spiritually, because you know a lot of people have information, they think they're smart, but you're not smart spiritually, then what's your, 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 your validity in really looking at uplifting yourself when you're not doing this? How do you think this is going to work for you? This is what we have to understand and really understand the seriousness of this. Because it's spiritual. And when we operate spiritually, then we can actually find ourselves having spiritual power with the Most High. No doubt about it. No doubt about it, people. And these plagues that we plague in our nation, with, they can be loosed from us. It's very important, people. Look at, uh, for you women, look at uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and 10. So it's very important that you confess to Mashiach Gabba Shah. He confess you, be confess you before the angel. It says, for this cause ought the woman to have power over her head, on power on her head because of the angels. 
See them spirits, man. And the woman is a weaker vessel, so therefore you really got to really look at confessing to Mashiach that was shy. So that you be all right. You be protected from those angels. You want the righteous angels to be with you. You don't want those wicked angels to come involved with you because that's going to be something that you not going to even want to deal with. As a weaker vessel, they don't let them come and deal with you. Help me, help me, help me. You ain't doing what you're supposed to do. We all have things that we have to do that's going to work for us. It's, we hearing it. We hearing about it. It's just about, are you going to take heed or you going to follow your own way? You follow your own way, then you're going to lose every time. We always lost. That's why he called us rebellious. Because we didn't want to follow the most high rules and regulations. We want to do our own thing. And now we suffer. Look at uh, Second Ezra, forty, verse forty of chapter sixteen. Let's jump up to verse 36. Second Ezra is 16 and 36. Oh no, we in 16. We gotta go to the we gotta go to the first verses. So lock you. Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. So he's saying Babylon and Asia. Destruction of the you, Babylon and Asia. And we showed you how Babylon represent Esau in Psalms 137, 7 to 9. Now he's including Asia. Woe be unto thee, destruction unto you, Egypt and Syria. Gird up your sails with cloths of sack and hair. Beware your children and be sorry, for your destruction is at hand. Let you know he's bringing this destruction on this earth, these plagues. A sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? Let you know a fire is sent among them from the Most High. Who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? So, when these plagues are sent unto you from the Most High, he said, and what is he that may drive them away? To take these plagues that the Most High sent to you, to drive them away from you. They say, may any man drive away a hungry lion in the wood? You gonna stop a hungry lion that's looking at you as his meal? In the wood, you ain't got no sword or no gun or anything to protect yourself? I don't think so. Or may anyone quench the fire and stubble? You gonna quench a fire and stubble when it have begun to burn? I don't think so. Stubble like tumbleweeds. May one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. Got a strong archer pulling that bow back hard as he can. As far as he can. You gonna stop it? No. The mighty power, 
of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob sent up the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? Most I send these plagues. And who is it that's going to drive them away? Who's going to stop the plagues of the Most High from coming? He said, a fire shall go forth from his wrath. Remember, the Most High is consuming fire. And who is he that may quench it? You're going to put out the fire of the Most High? When it comes from him, he shall cast lightnings. It's the Most High. He going to cast lightnings. And who shall not fear? When them lightnings come, shoo, see that that light come down and just breaking trees apart, split them in half. Shh. He shall cast lightnings, and who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? We talking about thunder like you ain't never heard before. Future prophecy, people. The most I shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten? The power at his presence. You hear that? He just going to threaten. And people going to be beating the power. Powder. Powder. Ashes. Just powder. At his presence. The earthquake. And the foundation thereof. He say these are the plagues of the most high. Earthquakes. Most, most high told him about Shagab Shai. Tell him. We got earthquakes in different places. The earthquake. And the foundation thereof. The sea arises up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled. And the fish thereof also, before the Most High, and before the glory of his power. Most High caused earthquakes. Who not going to be afraid? The sea rising up. Tidal waves and so forth. Tsunamis and so forth. So the fish can be afraid. Verse 13. For strong is his right hand that bent the bow. Strong is his hand, his right hand was a Mashiach Galashai. We didn't find that previously. That bent the bow. His arrows that he shooting are sharp, like the missiles that we see shot. And shall not miss. When they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. You know that? The ends of the world. So we know that 2 Ezra 6 and 9 says, For Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. So this is before we got next. As the Israelites, this is before. When these arrows, these missiles, going to be shot into where? The ends of the world. Behold, the plagues are sent. You know that? The plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. You know, the Most High sending plagues upon this earth. They ain't coming back to him. Remember, his word does not come back void. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out. We let you know no matter what you do, these fires are not going to be put out. See, the most I just playing with you, showing you what he can do. Just a little bit. Because he's telling you here, the fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consumes the foundation of the earth. He's going to purify this earth with fire, people. He put the rainbow in the sky to remind himself that he would not flood the earth again. He's going to burn it up. That's a purifying element. Water and fire. This time he's bringing fire. Purify the earth. You're going to burn a lot of people up. Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer. Saying this again. Return it not backwards. It ain't going. Once he shoot, pull that string. Have that arrow over there and shoot it. Are these missiles that's going to be shot into the ends of the earth? It's not going to go back. Once they go forward to hit that mark, they're not going backwards. They're going forward. Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again. When you say these plagues, they're going to be going out, killing people. Woe is me, woe is me, 
Ezra said, who will deliver me in those days? Now, what does this scripture say? Because a lot of you that have, that you, you have the mind of a Pharisee, excuse me, a Sadducee, they didn't believe in the resurrection, the regeneration. Ezra is saying, who will deliver me in those days? This is after he's living at this period of time, getting receiving his prophecy. The beginning of sorrows and great mournings. The beginning of famine, food shortages, and great death. A whole lot of people dying. The beginning of wars and the powers that stand in fear, shall stand in fear. They're going to be afraid. The beginning of evils, hear that? The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? You know it's not in this time. But he said, hey, who will deliver me in these days? And what shall he do when the evil shall come? Like you should be wondering too. Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. All these things are sent for amendment. To get you right. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness. Nor be always mindful of the scourges. They're going to forget about it. Like certain things happen, everybody be all in the uproar. Ah, oh, complaining, just hollering and screaming. Next thing you know, back to normal. That's what it says. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness. All these things, they still not going to turn from wickedness. Tell you the revelation, they're going to blaspheme the name of the Most High. Nor be always mindful of the scourges. Don't forget about them. Behold, visuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. So he's going to make everything change. So visuals, your, your food going to be cheap. So they're going to think that everything is cool. Everything is going great. And even then shall evils grow upon earth. Evils going to grow upon the earth. Sword, famine, and great confusion. For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine. They're going to die of food shortage. Starvation. And the other that escaped the hunger shall the sword destroy them. We're going to be killing them. And the dead shall be cast out as dumb. And there shall be no man to comfort them. For the earth shall be wasted and the city shall be cast down. I mean, the city is going to be cast down. There shall be no man left to till the earth and the sower. So ain't no farmers going to be planting no crops. The trees shall give fruit and who shall gather them? The trees will give fruit. You get nobody to get to pick the uh, fruit off the trees. The grapes shall ripen and who shall tread them? For all places shall be desolate of men. Hear that? All places will be desolate of men. Get rid of a lot of men. So that one man shall desire to see another and to hear his voice. It's going to be desolate of men. So you're going to desire to hear the voice of a man. You're not going to be able to hear the voice of a man. So therefore, ain't no cell phones going to be working, y'all. Ain't no t indoor telephones going to be working. So that one man shall desire to see another. Desire to see another. And to hear his voice. Just to hear his voice. For of a city, there shall be ten left. Hear that? Of a city, there shall be ten left. And two of the field, which shall hide themselves in the thick groves and in the clefts of the rocks. That's why Mashiach Rashad said, hey, when he, when he said he's going to get them, if they're not righteous, he getting them. As in an orchard of olives, upon every tree there are left three or four olives. You hear what he's saying? Three or four Olives left on an olive tree that has a numerous amount of olives. Or as when a vineyard is gathered, there are left some clusters of them that diligently seek through the vineyard. Even so, in those days, there shall be three or four left by them that search their houses with the sword. Going to be three or four left going through the city, just like that movie, um, the book of Eli. Remember that book? 
But Denzel Washington it was like desolate. Just a few men, just a few people left. Even so, verse 31, even so in those days there shall be three or four left by them that search their houses with the sword. Plagues on this earth. They're going to be going in the houses, three or four, going to the houses with guns. And the earth shall be laid waste, and the fields thereof shall wax old, and her ways and all her paths shall grow full of thorns, because no man shall travel therewith. They're through. Ain't going to be no men to travel. The virgin shall mourn. Virgin going to mourn. Having no bridegrooms. No men to marry. The women shall mourn. Having no husbands. Husbands will be put to death. They're going to be widows. The daughters shall mourn. Having no helpers. In the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed. In the wars, their husbands going to be killed. And their husbands shall perish of famine. They're going to die of hunger. Starvation. Hear now these things and understand them, these servants of the Most High, who are the children of Israel. Behold, the word of the Most High, receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Most High spake. Don't believe these idols. All these different religions that's telling you it's going to be all right. You Do it sound, do it sound all right to you? Behold, the plagues draw nigh. The plagues are drawing near people. That's why I'm here to warn you. And are not slack. They ain't slack. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son, a woman in the ninth month, she ready to bring forth birth of her son. With two or three hours of her birth, great pains can pass her womb. She having those contractions. The last two or three hours, it hurts. It's painful. I can't say how it is, but I've heard it's very painful for a woman. Which pains, when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. A lot of women go through a lot of pain in childbirth. Even so shall not the plague be slack to come upon the earth. You hear that? Even so. I mean, it's comparing it. You women should be able to relate if you had children. And anyone that had children, if you had, that, had children when you had a lot of pain with those contractions and before the baby came, that's what he's comparing it to. So, you know, they said that's some of the worst pain you can have, worse than a toothache. Woo, man. Even so shall not the plague be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it as ev on every side. Sorrow, everybody gonna be sorrowful on this earth. Oh, my people. Who is his people? The 12 tribes of Israel. Hear my word. Make you ready to the battle. You hear me say, make you ready to the battle. And in those evils, be even as pillars upon the earth. God might have to move around. He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away. And he that buyeth as one that will lose. You selling? Hey, you ain't going to get nothing out of it. You buying, you're going to get nothing out of it either. You're going to lose it. He that occupies merchandise as he that have no profit by it. And he that buildeth as he that shall not dwell therein. He gonna build it. You ain't gonna better live there in peace. Remember, you gonna have three or four going through the city with guns and weapons, robbing everybody. We already went through this. He that sow, he that farming, as if he should not reap. You're not gonna get the harvest or what you plant. So also he that planted the vineyard as he that shall not gather the grapes. You plant the vineyard, but you're not going to be able to gather your grapes. They that marry as they that shall get no children, and they that marry not as the widowers. Be just like you didn't, you know, you're going to be just like the women that lost their husbands. And therefore, they that labor, labor in vain. They that's working, working in vain. For strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods, overthrow their houses, and take their children captives. For in captivity and famine shall they get children. Wow. Captivity and, it will just happen with us. You know, 
We got children. And all our possession was taken away from us. The more will I, the more, it says, and they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, the more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own persons, the more they show off the rich and the famous from free labor or slavery, us getting children in captivity and so forth, the more that they show off their merchandise with robbery, because robbery is what? You got free labor, 400 years or more. The more they deck their cities, building these high-rise buildings, and like I say, you look out of airplane window, look like gold, streets paved with gold. The more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own persons, the more will I be angry with them for their sin, said the Most High. And we're going to visit everybody's sin, transgressing the laws of the Most High. But our sin as Israelites are pretty much accomplished. Now you're going to look at the sins of those that are Edomites and those that follow the way of this world, the system of this world, in sin. Like as a whore envious a right, honest, and virtuous woman, you know, a whore envious a, a, a honest and virtuous woman. So shall righteousness hate iniquity. See, we righteousness, you learn these laws that come out, but you're going to hate iniquity. You're going to hate the wickedness of this world, the sins that people are doing. When she decketh herself and shall accuse her to her face, when he cometh that shall defend him, that diligently searches out every sin upon earth. And therefore be ye not like thereunto, nor to the works thereof. For yet a little, and iniquity shall be taken away out of the earth. Hallelujah. There will be no more sins in the earth. It's going to be righteousness. And righteousness shall reign among you. Let not the sinner say, he have not sinned. Don't let the sinner say, I have sinned. You see... You know, I've showed you lessons in different times of how the prophets were saying we sin, even though they were righteous. That's what's marvelous in the eyes of the Most High. Let not the sinner say that he have not sinned, for the Most High shall burn coals of fire upon his head. You know, that? better be careful thinking that you are that. Say, look, don't let the sinner say that he have not sinned, for the Most High shall burn coals of fire upon his head which saith before the most high power and his glory of Mashiach El Shai, I have not sinned. You will stand before the most high. That's why he said, look, Matthew 7, 21. Many will say unto me in that day, Mashiach, Mashiach, have we not prophesied in thy name by Shema Mashiach El Shai? And in thy name by Shema Mashiach El Shai have cast out devils? And in thy name by Shema Mashiach El Shai have done many wonderful works? And then when I profess it to them, I never knew you. The prophet me, ye that work iniquity. But what are they going to say? They're going to say, verse 53, let not the sinner say that he have not sinned, for the Most High shall burn coals of fire upon his head. Don't throw him in the lake of fire. That's that lake of fire right there. We're said before the Most High and the Mashiach Yavashai and his glory. That's the Mashiach Yavashai before the Most High and his glory. The Mashiach Yavashai, I have not sinned. Behold, the Most High and the Mashiach the other side, know all the works of men, their imagination, the way you think, their thoughts, and their hearts, their minds, which spake but the word, let the earth be made, and it was made, let the heaven be made, and it was created. And you think he don't know what we're thinking? He don't know our imaginations and our minds? In his word, where the stars made, and he knoweth the number of them. This is what you're talking about. He said, we more numerous than the stars in the sky. Look at the stars in the sky. He said he knows the number of the stars that he made. He searches the deep and the treasures thereof. He has measured the sea and what is contained. Of. He has shut the sea in the midst of the waters, and with his word hath he hanged the earth upon the waters. 
Mashiach Kelf shot. He used them to hang the earth upon the waters. He spread it out the heavens like a vault. Upon the waters hath he founded it. In the desert hath he made streams of water and pools upon the tops of the mountains that the floods might pour down from the high rocks to water the earth. He made man and put his heart in the midst of the body and gave him breath, life, and understanding. That's what the Most High gave us. Ain't no evolution ever going to do something of this nature when we read about here. What man came from evolution? My Big Bang Theory. I mean, they blew up Nagasaki and Hiroshima in Japan. Did men come out of that? Was people born out of that? Any other bombings that they done? Yeah. In the spirit of the almighty power, which made all things and searched out all hidden things in the secrets of the earth, surely he know of your inventions. He know what you're doing. He know what you're inventing. I can tell you about how, how you know your inventions and what you think in your hearts, even them that sin and would hide their sin. He know. He know about these inventions. That's why he talk about these inventions. Oh, yeah, you're going to use them inventions against a Mashiach Yahushai. He, he knows about it. That's why he said, hey, go to 2nd Ezra 13. You know about all these wicked inventions that you invented, thinking that you're going to come against him. Gotcha. Look, 2nd Ezra 13. Look at 2nd Ezra 13 and 8. It says, And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him, Mashiach Yahushai, when he come to judge and make war, were so afraid, and yet does fight. See? They're going to be afraid, but yet they're going to fight. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor held sword nor any instrument of war, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath. I can't say this enough. And out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests, and they were all mixed together. The blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight, and burned them up, every one, so that upon a noble, sudden of a noble multitude, nothing was to be perceived but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. So, I mean, this is what they plan on doing and just the end result of it. So he know about your inventions because he'll allow him to do it so that it could be a very great galactical battle. Not only on the earth but in the sky also. Second Ezra 16 and 63, surely he know of your inventions and what you think in your hearts. Even them that sin and would hide their sin. Therefore, have the most exactly searched out all your works 
and he will put you all to shame when he burns. Like I say, none will be the other, dust and smother smoke. And when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men. And your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. Because he will come with the law of the Most High. And as you have sinned, your sins going to be accusing you. Thou shalt not murder. You murdered all these people. Shh. You finish. See, so what would you do? Well, how would you hide your sins before the Most High and his angels? He asked you a question. How are you going to hide your sins before the Most High and his angels? How you gonna hide your sins before the Most High and Mashiach Yahweh Shai and His angels? Behold, the Most High, while Mashiach Yahweh Shai Himself is the judge. Fear Him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall the Most High lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble, Yahshua. Because the the players that the wicked got to do is give back all that they have. They're not gonna do that. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle with things offered unto idols, wickedness. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trotting underfoot. So they're going to say, hey, we got food. There's going to be a famine, lack of food in Great Triple We got food. All you got to do is put some music on the bus and... And, and let us walk right around in buses with eating food and you hungry. That's why he said, and they that consent unto them shall be had in derision. You're going to be had in derision and in reproach, a disgrace. And trotting underfoot, they're going to kill you. And there shall be in every place and in, in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the most high. They shall be like madmen, sparing none. You hear that? They're going to be like madmen, sparing none but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Most High. So I said, the devil know he got a short time in Revelation 12 and 12. He's coming down upon those that keep the laws of the Most High, the commandments of the Most High, and have, a, have the true testament of a Mashiach, Yahweh Revelation 12 and 12, Revelation 12 and 17. Where they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. When they start doing this, they start messing with the Most High's chosen, then everybody gonna know who is his chosen. That's why you read in, uh, in 2 Ezra 13, Mashiach Hashem went up on a mountain. That mountain was not a few a mountain, but it was the children of Israel. He say, then shall be known, be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold is in fire. Hear, O ye, my beloved. There's only the most high beloved is the children of Israel. Twelve so tribes of Israel said the most high. Behold, the days are of trouble are at hand. But I will deliver you. I will save you from the same. This is your faith, Yahshua. He said the days of trouble. This is Jacob's trouble. But he said, I'm going to save you. I'm going to deliver you from the same. I'm going to deliver you from Jacob's trouble. Be not afraid. Neither doubt. Don't be afraid. And continue to have faith. And never doubt. For the Most High is your guide. He's going to guide you in what you need to know and do. And the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts, said the Most High, power. Let not your sins weigh you down. No let your sins weigh you down. And let your iniquities lift up themselves. Let your iniquities, your wickedness lift up themselves. Smash them. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins. Caught up in their sins. And covered with their iniquities. Wickedness. Like as a field is covered over with bushes and the path there are covered with thorns that no man may travel through. It is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. He'll let you know. He gonna cast you into the lake of fire. That's what he's talking about. You don't want that to happen to you, Yahshua. We have an opportunity and we wanna make sure that we make the best of it. Without fail. Go to Judah, fifth chapter.
Judah 5 and 11 said, Therefore the king of Egypt rose up against them, talking about the 12 tribes of Israel, and dealt subtility with them, and brought them low with laboring and brick, and made them slaves. Talking about we the children of Israel, who is in Egypt. Then they cried, it's a solution, then they cried unto their power, the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he smote all the land of Egypt with incurable plagues. You know, he smote all the land of Egypt with ten plagues. With incurable plagues. So the Egyptians cast them out of their sight. Especially when he killed every firstborn male, anything that came on this earth of the Egyptians. The Egyptians cast them out of their sight. And the Most High dried the Red Sea before them and brought them to Mount Sinai and Kadesban and cast forth all that dwell in the wilderness. So they dwelt in the land of the Amorites. And they destroyed by their strength all them of Eshabon. And passing over Jordan, they possessed all the hill country. And they cast forth them before them the Canaanite, the Parasite, the Jebusite, and the Shemite, and all the Jergesites. And they dwelt in that country many days. These are the nations that the Most High got rid of to give us their land. Because they were wicked. Doing wicked things. And whilst they sinned not before their power. When we didn't sin before the Most High. We kept His laws, His commandments, His rules and regulations. They prospered. You know? This is how you prosper. By doing right before the Most High. They prospered. Because the Most High that hated iniquity was with them. The Most High that hated iniquity was with us. But when they departed from the way which He appointed them. We departed from the way. The Most High told us to follow in His law, such commandments. They were destroyed in many battles, very sore. They were led captives into the land, to a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their power was cast to the ground. And their cities were taken by the enemy. I mean, think about this. If you take it like it is now, this is our story. Now, if these nations were so into our power, why didn't they just go to the temple and keep on worship like we worship? No, they burnt our temples down. That's why right now you're all into a, a catch-22. I mean, uh, you, you've been fooled. You've been ran up. You've been dumbfounded. You've been brain polluted. To think that other nations have the same power that we have. He's the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What nation of the other nations you hear, I see the KKK, I think they try to say they're the 12 tribes of Israel, but that's a lie because my check of Shad came with the earth. He was he had feet like a fine brass. He had hair and wool. You know, the Israelites say Judah Mordecai.